Welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. We have Nicole Byer back with us and joining her, we have Sashir Zamara. Uh, they have a Best Friends podcast that's so funny. We talk about them doing comedy. We talk about them uh, and their food issues. There's some uh, lingering food grudges between them. And we just talk about life in general. They're hilarious. They're sweet. They're funny. And their friendship is infectious. Enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep. Well, let's talk about your guys' podcast on this podcast. Yes. We just found out that you guys are coming up on your year anniversary. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. One year. One year. It's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, it's also just so nice to hear friends talk to friends so candidly. Um, so, yeah. Have you guys found that you're learning a lot about each other? No. No. And I would be so angry if I was learning <laughs> things about her. <laughs> well, sometimes I do say, say stuff that you haven't heard before, and you're like, why haven't you told me? <laughs> When did that happen? With who? <laughs> I like to know things about you. I, yeah, I get it. It makes me happy and proud to be like, yes, I've heard this story. It provides <laughs> new opportunities for confrontation. Yeah. That's fun. Mm -hmm. When she, uh, she'll bring this up often. She <laughs> found out years into our friendship that uh -huh. I, she was born, I was in born in Japan. Oh, okay. But I didn't know I had to tell her. I didn't know when. It didn't come up naturally. So I didn't know it would be like, by the by. <laughs> In case someone outs me on being from Japan. Well, you know I'm from New Jersey. I was born <laughs> in New Jersey. So I know you're from Indiana, but you were not born there. No. <laughs> so, no. So if you hear new information, your assumption is that she's been purposefully withholding this from you. Yes. And that it's not that it just didn't guess, come up. I guess that's what my brain thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is literally insane. That's healthy. That's uh, healthy. You care about her so much. <laughs> I did. I get. I got unreasonably angry when I heard you were born in Japan. <laughs> you really but at least I well, know. Yes. Yeah. Not in the now moment, you, but later I'm like, well, that was crazy. Well, I'm curious to know if you guys. I mean, based on hearing that you don't have all the facts about each other, uh, if you guys have the same origin <laughs> story of your friendship. Oh. Like if you if someone asked you like how did you guys become friends do you have the same memory or the same point of view on that I, I don't feel like I think yes. so I met Would you Would you tell the story yes. and then we can find out if you have the Should same Should I close my ears so that I don't know what you're saying Oh I mean but Well that work? I mean I don't mind if you guys collaborate on oh, piecing the story, the story okay. together Okay Well okay on 1 2 3 we'll say <laughs> We'll say the event we first met at. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Hold on, let me think about this one. <gasps> you don't know? <laughs> well, there's like a couple that were around the same time. No, there is one event where we met for the very first time. Okay, you guys ready? <laughs> I'm okay, one, I'm terrified. two, three. An the improv show. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. You the, tell the story of where you think we first met. The improv show is a safe guess because that seems <laughs> like a I know. I should have just done that. Okay. Well, oh, we boy. improv. We both had um, the same improv teacher, Sylvia mm -hmm. Ozols, at different times. Okay. And she put together a mashup group of women okay. to perform at a show. And she put me, Nicole, and Ashley Ward, who was our improv coach for a while mm -hmm. and a few other ladies on this team and it was a, a great show and I guess that's where we first saw each other <laughs> but I was also thinking there's also there was a diversity program at UCB and they would set you up with a mentor okay. which I guess was like just someone who has been at UCB for years mm -hmm. and so someone you could be like hey I I'm confused about this process or whatever. If you just had any questions. You could questions. ask for advice yes. and things, yeah. And we both had the same mentor, Christine Nangle, who's okay. blasting off into fame. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and we had like a, a di we had diversity meetups and dinners uh, yeah. and stuff like that. So there okay. was one at McManus where we met up with our mentor and then Christine in introduced us both. Is that the first time? I think that might have been the first time. The first time, time that you actually Damn, like, I met each other. being familiar at that point. I feel like that was like still like, oh, hello. And then when we were on stage together, it was like a little more like, oh, I've seen you before. That's what huh. I think happened. What's your you recollection? You might be right. I just have those two flipped where okay. we met at the show first because I yeah. remember being like, wow, she looks cool. You were wearing <laughs> teal. I think teal <laughs> pants. Wow. 
in a goldenrod shirt. She loves goldenrod. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I, just, I remember you just being so funny and I was like, oh, wow, I like want to be friends with her. Yeah. And then I remember meeting you again at McManus and being like, oh, yeah, we did that show together. But that may not have happened. Uh, they were around the same time. Yes. OK, <laughs> so around this time, you yes. guys had performed with each other and then slowly offstage got to know each other. Yes. Yes. Was there a specific point in which like a friendship was fully solidified that it was like. We hang out or want to hang out outside of the realm of the theater. I feel like one of the first times we hung out outside of doing shows was at the UCB training center mm -hmm. where I worked. I was I worked at the front mm -hmm. desk and you were like, oh, I have time to kill. Can I just sit here? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and that was and the rest of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> I just sat behind her every day. I mean, yes. yes. I mean, that was like, there was a good chunk of time where we saw each other so much. It's funny that we never had a class together because I saw you. Oh, you never, never so, had a class no. together? No. Wow. But like, we would have uh, daytime rehearsals mm -hmm. with our improv group Doppelganger, uh, with this, which is the two of us and Keisha Zoller. Yeah. And then we would have, uh, then she would go to work. I would uh -huh. sit behind her for hours. <laughs> We would go do a show or go watch a uh -huh. show. We get dinner get after dinner, get and we drinks, part, and then we'd leave, call each call other. Each on the phone. other. <laughs> just to make sure you guys got home safe. No, not even. Just it would just be like, more. hey, one more thing. <laughs> this happened recently where we went to dinner. I wouldn't let her leave because I was like, I'm not going to see you for a very long time. And she was like, you'll literally see me tomorrow. And I was like, oh. And then we got home and then she texted me and then we started like looking at memes together <laughs> and then we were just talking for two and then we just got on the phone because I was like oh why text <laughs> this is too long in between it just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well that I mean kudos because a lot of people don't have someone that they can have that much uh, necessary interaction with on yeah. a regular mm -hmm. basis on all forms of <laughs> communication <laughs> yeah we like mm -hmm. calling each other texting, texting sending, sending memes on Instagram <laughs> on sending Twitter. Twitter things to each oh, other what are uh -huh. the what are the memes that you guys are sending to because currently now Mamrie and I and our friend Jocelyn are all Concerned and intrigued with Britney Spears's Instagram and this red wall that she keeps posting oh, in front of. Yeah, oh. she's posted. She'll post like three to eight photos in three the course of eight. an hour, all in front of this one red wall. Oh. As of right now, who knows by the time this podcast goes out, yeah. what color change is oh, happening? Boy, Mamrie thinks she figured out what Instagram themes are and that she's like oh. trying to go for one, but I think she just likes this wall. I think hmm. she probably, it's very simply, she likes the wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't really think much thought goes into what she does, yeah. which sounds like a read, but it's not. No. It's, I think she's had to think about her image and herself for such a long time that she's yeah. just like, whatever. Yeah. But what are you guys sending to each other? A lot As of, dog of now. Memes. Dog memes. Dogs, okay. Uh, uh, Wendy Williams. A lot of Wendy Williams. Right. Uh, when you second uh, the second season came out, there was a lot of hot memes oh, about yeah. you. Oh, okay, have not seen your memes. We loved you. <laughs> <laughs> we loved you. We love me. We, me. We love memes. We love, <laughs> we you, love you and me. And <laughs> you memes. memes. Me. <laughs> me memes. You memes. Uh, uh, and well, speaking of Wendy Williams, you've been on her show a bunch. Yes. Um. Have Have you has she ever been on Wendy? I haven't. No. Okay. You gotta get there. Yeah. What's you gotta it, get there. You gotta go. On. What's it like? She's very funny. Yeah. She's a very funny woman. Um. Her audience like, it's like a a reverence that they have for her. Like they like hang on to every word she says. Yeah. She's very friendly and she's like very very funny. Okay. Um I I thoroughly like her. Do you think I saw I guess a couple weeks ago that she farted on air or there was the <laughs> there was a conspiracy oh boy. behind it but it just sounded like an actual fart <laughs> in her chair. She shifts her weight, you hear a fart and she continues talking to the camera. That's and then like nothing happened. So funny. Yeah, and I there's part of me that thinks like that she is in on it enough that mm -hmm. she knows that that's hilarious. And if she keeps on, like she can see the memes happening uh, as it's happening. I also don't know if Wendy has that wherewithal. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. To be like, this is going to be a funny meme. I think she just lives her life and she's like, I farted. And you know what? I'm not addressing it. <laughs> <laughs> just not uh, Maybe she's, her body's just so tired that she couldn't even, 
like hold it in. It yeah. just like came out. She was uh-huh. like, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, her body is funny. Like when she fainted, I mean, that wasn't funny. That was, but the yeah. way she fainted was very was dramatic. So dramatic. Like yeah. I was like, I didn't know faces could. She, <laughs> <laughs> so many emotions. So she, many. It looked like she was seeing a ghost or yes. something. Yes. And yeah. then she went just straight down. Was, I don't think I've ever seen someone faint like that. Yeah, yeah. There's something very performative about it. Yeah. Like it feels like someone doing a stage faint. But yes. Like she's actually. But she actually fainted. Yeah. Um, I love Wendy. Wow. Um, um have you guys had are you doing live shows together too still or we've done a, a few shows at Largo before of the uh, improv and the mm-hmm. best friends okay. podcast live do you have a collective memory together that it was either the best or worst I mean you guys have done a million shows yeah. together um, but anything as of recent recently I mean, we're just so funny. We're so funny. <laughs> the shows go so smoothly and wonderful. Uh, there's nothing know. to report. Honestly, <laughs> we interviewed Marcellus. Oh, Martellus. Martellus. He's a fuck. What's his? Mar- He's a football player. He's a football player. Okay. He called himself Marty. And he's like, Marty, like party. And we're like, we're, we know Marty. <laughs> it's like, so <laughs> funny. That's not a crazy name <laughs> for us to memorize. <laughs> but you interviewed Martellus him. Bennett. Yeah. And his wife. Okay. And. It was, or no, it was just him. And his wife. Oh, his wife came yeah. up. Oh, yeah, because we were interviewing best friends. Mm-hmm. And he said something that was so funny. Um, he was. He said to his wife, um, if you were in a burning building with all the other bitches I fucked, I would save you. So Whoa. We, Wait, we, so he said, he said this to his wife <laughs> in what context? Mm, that... I would so just to prove how much he yeah. loved her. Because okay, okay. we were like, when okay. did you know that like you loved her? And he's like, oh, well, I knew I loved her when I was like, if all of the girls I'd been with were in a burning building, I'd save her. <laughs> so we did a scene based on that. And it was very funny. It was, very oh. funny. It was so funny because we played the bitches who <laughs> weren't getting saved. <laughs> we're like, but Stephanie got to go. <laughs> it's getting really smoky. It's getting really hot yeah. here. That's fantastic. And also what a an oddly poetic way to prove your yes. love and friendship mm-hmm. for your partner. Yeah. Wow. There was one show where um, they used to have a <laughs> analog clock on the side of the stage at mm-hmm. Largo. And I feel like after this, they had a digital clock by, the, uh-huh. <laughs> by where the booth is. <laughs> what happened? Uh-huh. <laughs> but, well, we were we only wanted to go like an hour. hour yeah, because I had to catch a flight. Yeah, oh. <laughs> truly had to leave. And so we were doing improv and there was a point where both of us were like, this feels, this feels so really long, long. Yeah. but we could. But there, the clock was not to the mm-hmm. side of the stage. We couldn't see what time it was, and we were like, okay. And then, and then Nicole walked off stage <laughs> and left I, me. I made it part of the yes, scene. It, it made sense. It made sense. But I uh-huh. truly did leave her out. I was like, I have to figure out what time it is. Yeah. I have to save myself <laughs> right now. And my man was sitting on the side, the side of the stage, and she's like, "What time is it?" And then he <laughs> pulled out his phone. And she's like, "Oh no!" And then came back. <laughs> We like wrapped it up quickly, uh-huh. and then she had to like just bolt to yes. the car. <laughs> it was so wild. Yeah, it was. We couldn't figure out what time it was. Oh, but then I mean, there's real life consequences yes. to this imaginary. Yes, stage this imag- we're like frying imaginary yeah. eggs, and I'm like, I have to go to the airport. <laughs> yeah, I have just, to go to my job. It sounds like how you start an improv scene. I'm late for the airport. <laughs> like I make these eggs. <laughs> we did a show in. Um, I think it was Canada. Okay. And we played two kids at the end of the world who oh, were like yes. repopulating the world. <laughs> and we just mirrored adults. So I was a little boy and I was <laughs> fully abusive. <laughs> oh, I was like, you gotta learn how to make dinner. <laughs> and after the show, this man was like, oh, I liked when you told her she had to learn. <laughs> oh, no. And I was like, oh, I guess you, it just went fully over your head. Yeah. I liked it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that means you did an accurate job, but unfortunately. Yeah, he saw uh, a bit of himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Truth and comedy and yeah. sometimes <laughs> misinterpreted. Um, you guys, are you both taking pole dancing classes? Yes. Mm-hmm. How is that? And how did you get into that? Um... I asked this year to go with me because I do not like doing things alone. Gotcha. Um, and 
I'm a big fan of pole dancing. We like jumbos. We like uh, yeah. watching ladies do incredible feats. Yeah. It's and, very, uh, I mean, yeah, jumbos clown room is like, the artistry and actually yeah. like the branding that they all uh -huh. create for themselves is so impressive to me. Yeah, that's what I like the most. Like I, there was a moment in time where I went to strip clubs frequently, but I think I, it was because I liked the dancing. <laughs> yeah. Not so much mm -hmm. like, like if I go to a club and they're just like rolling around and like smacking their ass. I'm yeah, like, I don't need that. I don't need that. I all want right. tricks. Tell me yeah. the tricks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so, yeah, when Nicole asked, do you want to do pole dancing? I was like, oh, of course I do. <laughs> but it's 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 so hard. hard. I've heard it's really difficult. But yeah. it's like a nice tangible thing where each time you do it, you're like, oh, I'm stronger. You're yeah. seeing I fully, results. It yeah. is yeah, really nice. Yeah, I'm stronger. Nice. Yeah. Do they, is it like, this is the wrong reference, but like karate? Like is, are there levels? Are there like there belts? Are are there are levels. There are, okay. Level, there's first time polars, level one, level two, one, two, uh, I think three, four. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, chronologically, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. 10, 9, 32, 6. Yeah. But there's Where, no like, uh, you kind of have to, you and, and if the instructor tells you, you guys are the judge of if you should mm -hmm. advance. It's not like oh. if you take six weeks of level one, then you move on to level two because you People are at different right, right, strength right. levels mm -hmm. and experience levels. So it's like someone may take level one and be maybe they had a dance background or something. Sure. So they might already mm -hmm. know how to move ahead faster than sure. other people. And some people might be like, I'm not comfortable even walking in a circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's tr well, is that true. <laughs> I mean, the shoes are intense enough, even yeah. just seeing them from you afar. You don't have to wear them. You don't. I don't wear them okay. because I. I'm scared. I don't want to break my ankle. Yeah. I mean, in my last class, this girl fell hard. And I was like, oof. Ooh, but she yeah. was not even dancing. She was just, just standing there. She was just standing by the sink. And I think she just like was moving <laughs> to like go walk. And then she like went to doof. And I was and, like, ooh. Boy. <laughs> See, it's scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But where are you guys now in the, the levels or experience? She's a level two yeah. queen. Congratulations. She's a level two diva. I've only <laughs> taken one class. <laughs> wow. Uh, but I finally got to move on after a year of level ones. Nice. And my teacher kept being like, you have to move on. And I was like, I don't think I'm ready. Because it's mm. your personal choice to move yes. to the next level. Okay. Wow. Mm. What an interesting system. Yeah. That really makes you evaluate yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm in one slash two. I haven't taken a level two yet, but that's also because I've been gone for a long time. Okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so consistency is a big part of it too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I hadn't pulled for like two months and then yeah. I took a level one because I was like, certainly I can't just start in a level two. <laughs> <laughs> Blast from me, but uh, but it, it truly comes back to you so quickly. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, of course, this is how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the culture around it? Like, is it because you're doing it individually? It's not like mm -hmm. improv where you're like on a team together, but you're taking classes with mm -hmm. other people. So, is it like a community kind of vibe? Definitely. Yes. I mean, it's so supportive. Yeah, yes. like we did a class where um, it was more strength based, and then we kind of did like a showcase I guess for the class mm -hmm. so like, everyone we just put music on and one by one people will dance oh, and it was just everyone being like yeah oh that's like, so then, sweet yeah, it's, it's, like some girls were pulling out tricks that we didn't learn in class that they ah, already knew and yeah. we're like oh go girls yeah. <laughs> uh, I I truly love it and yeah. I've only met nice people. Yeah. yeah. No one's like, ah, oh, man, you got that trick. I want that trick. And you're like, that's an insane thought. Like, right. it would never cross your mind. You're just proud of that person for doing it. Yeah. That's I took a, this class called Low Flow, which <laughs> I thought, it, so it's a, it's just like how to move and do floor work mm -hmm. and pole work where you're not going up, mm -hmm. where you're, not, you're okay. not climbing, you're not inverting. So I was like, that seems easy and yeah. I feel like I saw it said, said level one or two and so I went and these girls knew things I had never <laughs> seen before oh, so I was no. like this is not a beginner class <laughs> <laughs> and then after Sashir took that class they, they put they changed the name <laughs> Like you must be level three or four <laughs> to do this, and uh, but they were so nice to me. Even though uh, I felt like I was like, I don't know, I'm shaking and I can't get the thing. They're they're like, you got it, girl. Oh, that's yeah, it's, that's incredibly sweet. Yeah. It's so nice, and I think it's because like pole is kind of like a stigmatized form of exercise right. and, and it's uh, also like a job for very people. Very vulnerable to like yeah. put yourself out there like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that's cool. It makes me want to look into it more because it scares the shit you out of me. You should do it. Yeah, good idea. Do it. But I've heard nothing but good things from like people it. that have taken classes and that like your self confidence. Yeah. And all of it. I didn't. I don't need confidence. Yeah, you, you came in. <laughs> I out came of 10. in. Guns <laughs> anything, it humbled you a little bit. <laughs> yes, actually, maybe. Because <laughs> oh I was God. like, oh, yeah, I see the logic and how you can do that. And then you try it and you're like, mm, no. Mm-hmm. no. Um, okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, more questions for you guys. We'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Not Too Deep. What's crazy? Today we have some sponsorship from Sports Research. It's your one-stop shop for a lifetime of performance, health, and wellness. They're the makers of the highest rated collagen peptide product on Amazon and their flagship product, Sweet Sweat. Sweating helps burn calories and sweet sweat, activated by your elevated heart rate, helps increase sweating during exercise. You simply apply the gel, which comes in a variety of pleasing scents, to slow to respond problem areas before you work out. For best results, use Sweet Sweat in combination with Sports Research's best-selling waist trimmers, if that's something that you're into. And did you know that collagen is vital to support the health of your skin, hair, nails, and connective tissues? That's why you should try Sports Research's third-party certified and non-GMO verified collagen peptides, which provide the best product at the best price. Offered in a variety of flavors, Sports Research collagen peptides can be added to coffee, to soup, to sauces, or more on the go or at home whatever you prefer and they've sent me some of their stuff i tried their sweet sweat one the coconut smells amazing i've put it on my person before i've worked out and it does actually help increase sweating elliot actually uses it every day when he works out and he looks like a glistening god so if you're interested I recommend. We have a special offer for you guys. If you go to sportsresearch.com and use offer code GRACE, G-R-A-C-E, at checkout right now, you'll get 20% off your order. That's 20% off site-wide at sportsresearch.com with the promo code GRACE at checkout. So you guys got a hard and fast no from Oprah and Gail on being (laughs) guests on your podcast. Yeah, we asked... They're the in first full ask. earnest. <laughs> How did you even? Who did you ask? Just a uh, your Air people. Wolf, your your wolf. people that, that <laughs> tried reached to hook out. Up. Yeah, <laughs> and they were like, "Who? What? No, no, <laughs> these people. No." But we were surprised because. We I mean, it's amazing would, you heard back. Yes, yes. I thought they would never respond, but instead they m- wanted to make sure that we know <laughs> that they do not intend to be on the show. <laughs> that they have heard your request. And They've yes, thought about we're it. We're aware of it. <laughs> yeah. It hurt more to know that they thought about yes. it and then said no. They, they could have lied and been like, we're way too busy because yes. they yeah. are or anything. I but mean, instead of no. Just I will say hard, this. No. Maybe Oprah was getting her comeuppets because she, is that a she, word? Come comeuppins. Up, comeuppins. Yeah. There's a video of her talking about balance and then she, she immediately loses her balance yeah, and she, she falls fell. all the way down. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. a recent video? Uh-huh. It was at like her Oprah con. She had like a big uh-huh. like, yeah. Oprah fest. Oh. She had a big convention. And I then really, I, I didn't even know it was happening and I'm anyway. devastated. I really would love it. It was out gone. here, right? Yeah. It was in uh-huh. LA. Yeah. And then she, uh, I think she posted a video not long after on Instagram of her like icing her her leg uh-huh. and just being like I fell and she it. goes down hard maybe if she'd done our podcast she wouldn't have fallen yeah. I mean there's nothing but carpet in here yeah, yeah. <laughs> and chairs <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm holding out that maybe they think about it again we'll ask again we'll get them for um, whatever reason that really got me <laughs> we have carpet in here and chairs no one falls on carpet. Yeah. Think about it. Oh, boy, that, oof. <laughs> that uh, got me. Who of the two of you would throw a better house party, do you think? Oh. I would say Nicole, because I probably, hmm. well. I think you. Oh, wow. I think you're you're a good hostess, and you don't get, like, drunk. <laughs> Those are two good qualities. Yeah, true. Yeah, the yeah. last house party I had, I got real faded pretty mm. quick. <laughs> Just like in the pool, being like, "Yeah, I feel true. good." <laughs> well, I was gonna say you because you would most likely throw a party where I would not, because mm. I that is a key element to this. Yeah, I have a bit of social anxiety, but I we did have a party recently. It was like a joint party with our neighbors mm-hmm. in in the yard that we share, and 
I was a good host. I mm-hmm. mostly took out trash, and That's I loved great. doing that because I didn't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> That's great. Give and, yourself a task. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I wish I could, but I am I'm holding the thing. <laughs> you I were do- doing that. That's wild. <laughs> I was like, she is really cleaning. <laughs> and you, yeah, you kept bouncing in and out with like bags of trash. And like, you're like, I can't <laughs> stop. <laughs> The trash. I what did I take? A rib from you? Oh, I was furious. <laughs> they made ribs. There's only a few left, and I had a rib sitting on the desk, <laughs> waiting for me to come back from the trash run. And I came back, and it was fully in Nicole's mouth. <laughs> and then I saw her face, and I said, "I'll, I'll be back." And I ran to the grill, and I found her man, and I was like, she, "I ate her rib," and she's so angry with me. And he was like, "All right, we'll get you a rib." <laughs> Wow. It's and, very funny because when we're like, she's mad, we're like, oh no. It's a major crisis. Yes. I also like that the guests had no idea that this major crisis was happening at this party. Nobody knew. No one knew. I was just bugging out by this grill. Yeah, you guys were like Charlie's Angels. Like you were. Very swift. No uh-huh. one knew. Behind the scenes. Uh, but we got you that rib and then your face, your whole demeanor changed. Well, so I love food. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. But it's, it shows that you care. Um, you guys are working on a screenplay together? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you give any details about it? Or is it confidential as it's in the works? I don't think we should. I don't think we should either. But people yeah. can just know you're working yes. on something. Yeah. That's We're always it. working on stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. you guys must collaborate on all kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. Is there something you haven't done yet that it's been like talked about, grandiose ideas, dumb or totally legitimate? No, I think we like pretty much follow through on everything. <laughs> Kudos. That's very <laughs> impressive. Think, well, we did want to turn Pursuit of Sexiness into a TV show, but oh, I think yeah. that's oh, that ship gone. maybe have sailed. That ship maybe have sailed. That ship <laughs> that, maybe have sailed. Okay, Would that you, was a bad sentence. Uh, <laughs> and now that you hear it from someone else. <laughs> Would you guys go on a reality competition show together? And if so, which one do you think? Yes. I would, but like 10, 15 years from now, okay. actually maybe now, if they paid an extraordinary amount of money. Let's say all the keys were in place, like mm-hmm. all of the all your needs were met with this potential of you going on a reality mm-hmm. game show. Which one do you think you would either do the best at or most want to go on? I want to go on Wipeout. Oh, oh yeah, what's Wipeout? God. You've never seen Wipeout? Oh, oh. Is it just like fall? Yeah. yeah I it's just do that. It's, whoever does the sound effects for Wipeout really is funny. a genius. <laughs> but that's... Uh, but that's more but like an individual. Individual. Well, what's a group? I guess like Amazing Race. That seems or... like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but we might be good at it because I feel like you would be great at like strategy and um, like figuring out how to win. Mm-hmm. And I'd be great at doing the thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. It'd be a good balance. Yes. That is a lot of our relationship. Me being like, I don't know how to make this a thing but a f- here's idea yeah. and you go okay, <laughs> okay I'll take care of we'll it we'll do this <laughs> yeah so you'd be like we need to get to Switzerland for our next clue mm-hmm. but I don't know how to get there I'd yeah. be like oh okay <laughs> I'll go fuck that old man and he'll pay for it <laughs> <laughs> And that's how the amazing work rates works, right? It sure, was, it is. It Sexual was favors. amazing. <laughs> yeah. The producers yelling, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the um wait, so sure, weren't you on a celebrity game show recently? Or something? I saw something of you and Joey Fatone. <laughs> yes. Um 25 words or less. Yeah, what is that? Super fun. It's a it's a game show. It's like I guess it's based off a board game or like an actual okay. game that people can oh. play. Where you get a word, uh-huh. and then you have to get your teammates to guess that word using 25 words or less. I see. Mm. Okay. And I'm really good at this game. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, okay. An example would be, um, okay, I have a word, mm-hmm. and I'm going to try to use... Um, Less than six words to let, get you that guy's okay. Word, okay. Okay. And is this a person or is it just a word? It's a word. Okay. Okay. But sometimes it can be people. Okay. okay. But this one's just a word. Okay. Um. Uh, sink, spout, faucet, the faucet. Yes. Wow. Oh, okay. Like that. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. This is. I see. This is. Ooh, a very, I think I'd be bad at this. I would be really bad. I get very frustrated. Okay. You I do think. one. 
Okay, I, I come up with a word and then have to give less than six words we're doing. What you can make? Oh, now that's also the thing you had. You can make your own parameters, but oh. you, since you were going up against another person, uh, you were kind of like facing off to see who can get less. So like you would basically oh. bet with each other. Be like, I'm sure I can get, and you had the same word. So we're like, oh, I, I think see. I can get this faucet word uh, if under under twelve, and, and the other person would be like. Do it. So it's like name 11. that tune, yeah. but with words. Like, yeah. Interesting. Oh. I don't know name that tune. I don't know name it's that like, tune it's either. It's a it's a game with the the song that you're like I'm gonna I bet I can guess this song in three notes and oh. I play like the first three yes. notes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I do that with you a lot. Oh my gosh. Are and wrong. She's, <laughs> she'll just start singing something. I'm like I don't know. I've never heard anything that sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also wanted to ask, I was listening to your guys' podcast and you, since so you're doing transcendental meditation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How is that going? It's going well. And um, what is transcendental meditation exactly? You know, I don't know if I know, no, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, um, it's just a different type of meditation okay. that um, kind of affects your mind and your actual physiology. Like wow. I do feel less stressed. Like truly after my first session, I walked out and I was like, I don't know if I did that right. Yeah. And then I ran like saw someone going to the grocery store and they were like, you look astonishing. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> I've never heard that before. Astonishing. Astonishing. Wow. Yeah. wow. What were you wearing? Golden rod? <laughs> <laughs> I had some gold in the outfit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, it just feels, it just, I've tried meditation in mm -hmm. other ways. Like I've tried apps. Right. I've tried doing it after yoga and it just didn't feel, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Um. So this for this, I like this because it made it seem really easy. Mm -hmm. And then in order to do it, you take these courses. You do four consecutive courses. And I I don't know what their reasoning is to do that, but right. I liked doing it four days in a row because it really drilled in the habit. Yeah. Yeah. Of doing it twice a day. Cause if I if they were if I just read it online and it was like, right. oh, that's what you do, then I'd be like, all right, I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah. But because I had to go physically go somewhere every day, mm -hmm. and then they're like, "Did you do the thing?" And then yeah. I was like, "Oh yeah, I, just, I had to." Yeah, accountability. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, there's accountability in it. Um, but yeah, I like it a lot. I do feel calmer, and uh, yeah, definitely less. Uh, I'm slower to get angry. That's great. <laughs> That's wonderful. So if you had taken my rib, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the past few weeks, I probably would have been like, you know, yeah, Nicole, I do you notice don't a difference? No. <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe not. When it comes to food. Yes. Like, it is... All, all pieces out the wild window. Wild. How much of, like, a monster you become when you're hungry. Or, like, food is not what you expected, and you're just like... Argh. I just love eating so much. And if someone praise me... <laughs> the food that I was promised. <laughs> That's a good... Uh, the food I was promised. It's a good thing to know in a friendship. Where to draw book the line. Out, the food I was promised. Honestly. <laughs> I would love to read just a book of your harrowing tales of not getting food that you needed. Yeah, just your rage essays. <laughs> and I was hungry the whole time I was writing it. <laughs> I would, yeah, I'd love to hear the yeah. audio book of that. Yeah. Uh, love yeah, that. We lock her in a room with no food and you're just like, ah! <laughs> And I asked for it to be me. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take one last break. When we get back, we have a ton of Twitter questions for you guys. We'll be right back. Not too deep. So we're all in it. We're all going through it right now. And here's something that might be able to help you out. If you're stuck at home, feeling isolated, worried about the state of the world and your life and your relationships, it's BetterHelp. They offer online professional counselors who can help. You can talk to a licensed online therapist and find relief. BetterHelp therapists specialize in issues like depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, insomnia, family conflicts, basically every single thing that all of us are experiencing at the current moment. Uh, I know that... I 
I've been going through peaks and valleys, highs and lows, ups and downs, all of it. And having someone to talk to, it's just such a relief, even for the most minor things conversationally or the most deep major things conversationally. You can connect with your counselor in a safe and private online environment. Anything you share is confidential. You simply fill out a questionnaire to help assess your needs and you get matched with a counselor that you'll love in less than 24 hours. You can easily schedule secure video or phone sessions with your therapist, plus exchange unlimited messages. And if for any reason you're unhappy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. You can get professional help when you want it, wherever you are. BetterHelp is a truly affordable option, and you guys will get 10% off your first month with the discount code GRACE. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash grace. That's betterhelp.com slash grace. Discount code GRACE. Talk to a therapist online and get help. Okay, we're going to get into these Twitter questions, but before we do, I'm going to ask you guys the two questions I ask every single guest that's on the podcast. The first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Oh. Is this like an insult? These, these it's things? your choice. <laughs> you can determine your intention behind it. Okay, sure. Cold spaghetti. And this, you know, could change on a daily basis, so this is just in this moment. Who do I want to just throw cold spaghetti? Does it have like marinara sauce on it? Also your choice. Oh. Yeah. Dealer's choice. Hmm. Well, I like I, how you guys are truly thinking about this. Well, I love. This is important. Yeah. I want to get this right. <laughs> I love spaghetti. Uh-huh. I really do love it. Cold spaghetti? Sometimes. And I'm like, if it has meatballs in it, Mm-mm. I was like, maybe I'll throw it at like Harriet Tubman because I want to like <laughs> share some delicious food with her. And okay. like, she did a lot of hard work. Yeah, she can but just like- catch it, put her in satchel, <laughs> and <laughs> have it as a snack on her journey. And that's the scene they cut from Harriet. <laughs> they turn all the spaghetti being thrown at her. <laughs> it's just a little time traveler who goes, ah! <laughs> they keep trying to erase our history. <laughs> That's my answer. Oh, this is your- okay, deleted scenes. Got it. Wow, we have. I can confirm we've yeah. never had that yeah. answer. Guess <laughs> 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 before. Um, maybe I would throw it at Eminem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Just- yeah. That's good. Well, he, he just he threw up his mom's spaghetti yeah. and he probably <laughs> wants some more. <laughs> he's, he's all out. He's all and, out. Um, yeah. And he has verbally confirmed that he has partaken uh-huh. in spaghetti so before. So he must like it. Yeah. Um, okay. The other question that I ask every guest is to tell us your worst pant shitting story or close call, but you can only use three words or three small phrases. So mine is college jogging front lawn. Oh, dang. Yeah. Mm. And it can be a close call. It doesn't have to be specifically pants shitting. It can be any sort of uh, body malfunction. Mm. Okay. Um, castor oil. Okay. Bed. As an adult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Wow. Tender greens, <laughs> banquet, period blood. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And for those that don't know, tender greens is it, a food establishment yes, it's out a, here. It's a full blown restaurant. <laughs> Full blown. I bled all over it. Wow. It was really upsetting. <laughs> oh. All right. Let's move on to some Twitter <laughs> questions. Um, okay. Prometheus Fire wants to know if you guys use Reddit, uh, do you have a guilty pleasure subreddit? If not, do you have other social media guilty pleasures? Mm. Do you guys use Reddit? No. I yeah, have. I don't. No. It's, it's unfamiliar it's confusing. territory. Yeah. I'll look at Reddit when someone goes, look at this awful thing someone wrote about you. <laughs> because people do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then you go there and you're like, nobody likes me. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your, when you open up your phone, if you go to your apps, like what's your social media of choice? Like what are you on more likely than the other? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. We love Instagram. That's I put, I put a timer on it recently. 
Did you? I'm not on it for more than two hours a day. Does mm. that has that been helpful? It has been helpful. And sometimes I don't even reach the limit, and I'm like, look at <laughs> you. <laughs> See, you're not dependent on anything. Mm-hmm. I'd be afraid I'd have the opposite that I would feel like I'm on there for ten minutes, and it'd be like you've reached your limit. Yeah, and I'd be like I'm a monster. Mm-hmm. Right. There are times where I've hit the limit in the morning, and it's like, well. <laughs> I'm, I'm not supposed to use it for the rest of the day, but you can also just ignore it. So yeah, mm-hmm. I do that too. That's just ignore fair. it sometimes. That's fair. That's fair. I've been getting into TikTok. Have you? TikTok is fun. I it's that. Are you un- on it? I'm not on it because I don't. I'm not gonna make videos for TikTok. But I you guess have I could, an account. But Good. yeah, I have an account. Okay. And I I creep. You creep. My explore page is learning what I like. <laughs> See, I I opened it up and I look at it and then I close it because it feels like untar- uncharted territory. Well, it's like Vine. Yeah, exactly. And I couldn't get into Vine because I just didn't know. Uh, I didn't spend enough time trying I to figure it Vine. out. Okay. Ooh, wait. <laughs> I love a quick funny video. Yeah, See, I great. will go on and watch Vine compilations on YouTube that yeah. are like, here are dogs in 2019. <laughs> like, perfect. But what's on TikTok? What's your what's your go-to? Black kids, they're very okay. funny. <laughs> they're, like young black youth, they're scary and funny. And I say scary because they'll roast you and oh, you like yeah. feel bad about yourself. <laughs> like when you're on the train, sometimes they'll just laugh at you and you're like, I look good. And they're like, do you, do you, man? And it cuts so deep. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, someone wants to know, MCWJ4, if you guys were on The Real Housewives, what would your tagline be? Mm. That's a tough one. What are the taglines usually? Uh, Nene Leakes, the, her first season was, when I walk into a room, I own it. And then one of the Beverly Hills Housewives, I think their first season mm-hmm. was, uh, diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. Freedom is. Yeah. <laughs> And it'll be like, I okay. love dogs, but I can't deal with bitches. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, stuff like okay. that. Okay, okay. Mm. They're all a little self-deprecating, but mm-hmm. like very self-serving. If you promise me food, you better give it to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Very on brand. Very great. Um, uh, don't walk near me. My labia will wrap you up. Nope. Um... <laughs> I like if yours is just a series of you <laughs> testing. <laughs> Hold on, one more time. Um, uh, well, I like used to say this joke on stage. If you can't stand the heat, get out of my pussy. <laughs> That's great. That Thank is a tagline. I feel like uh, Erica Jane would say something mm-hmm. along those lines. She is great. you got to watch her music videos. I think I have. Uh, oh, yeah. She's... She does the splits. Literally perfect. She's yeah. on Brooke Candy's new album oh, or EP, great. and oh, it's really? a great song. Her whole, it's like Stargasm, I think that's what it's called. Great. It's 30 minutes. It's great. It's such, oh, ooh, Brooke Candy. She has the best one-liners on the show, like in her talking head interviews. Mm-hmm. They're so great. And then it's just her sipping champagne, like through a straw <laughs> in between everything. Um, someone's asking... What's the experience like being in film fests versus cameos, comedy shows, recurring TV roles? What? Repeat that? Uh, the a... experience of being in film fests for the weekend. Oh, versus, okay. for you. Versus cameos, comedy shows, or recurring TV roles. Oh, okay. I was in a movie called The Weekend mm-hmm. uh, that you can watch on Amazon Heck or yeah. Apple or most other places. And... <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, we went. We did the festival <laughs> run with that movie, and and I've been to fest- other festivals with other movies, and I like it a lot. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to sit in the audience and hear people watch your stuff, and uh, also be like, "Look at what everyone else is doing too." Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, here my peers doing cool stuff as well. Um, yeah, That's I, cool. I enjoy the process, and I like indie movies because. It feels like everyone involved is doing it for the love of it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we also want people to watch it. Sure. And give us money for it. But But it feels like there's an actual, like, everyone's putting in their best efforts and, like, wants genuine, like, success from every angle. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, congrats, Nicole. You have a pilot. 
Yeah. That's very exciting for NBC. Knock on wood. Yeah. I wanted to get picked up. That'd yeah. be awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. What, how is that difference between doing something like Nailed It versus doing a scripted? I mean, it must be a nice breath of fresh air. Yeah. Uh, Nailed It truly only takes up like 13 or 14 days out of my year. Wow. Because um, we shoot one episode uh, a day. Mm-hmm. But uh it's kind of, it's unscripted in a way where, like, all our interactions are unscripted. But, like, when I'm explaining the cookies or whatever, that's, like, uh, that's scripted and right, impromptu. Right. But, um, yeah, acting is just different. Um, I can make different choices that I can't really make as a host. Right, like, If right, I started, right. you know, if I was like, I'm going to do this emotional. And I'm like, yeah. why? <laughs> just say why? the words. Why are you crying over a cookie? Let me do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so she was telling us a little bit before you got here about your prepping for your special. Yes. To record your special. Do you guys, like, do you work, do you uh, get Nicole's opinion or feedback on stuff like that when you guys work on projects that aren't the ones that you're, you know, on paper working on together? Yeah, we'll definitely run mm-hmm. bits by each other or, like, read each other's scripts or whatever the thing is. Because mm-hmm. um, I trust her opinion yeah, so much. Yeah. And I know she... I know she knows my sense of humor and so mm-hmm. like it it's super super helpful to have someone who yeah. already knows your work and knows what you're capable of and has an opinion on what you're doing yeah are you excited for her special taping of course I, am. <laughs> I went to her first special taping and it was I mean not to be corny but like special it was like very special that's very sweet. Uh, we were in New Orleans with like a bunch of friends and I just, like, knew how much work you would put into it. You found this beautiful blue outfit to wear. (laughs) You looked stunning. You were, like, loose in a way that I was like, ah, she's doing it. And it was just, like, really amazing to watch. And it's fun to watch a friend uh, see all of their work culminate into, Mm -hmm. like, a special or, like, The weekend, Like, all the movies you've done. Like, uh, the guest spots you've done. Like, it's just, it's really exciting to watch your friend thrive right yeah. especially when you know their potential too yes. and you're she's just she's like, one of the they're... funniest people i know oh that's so sweet and when other people like uh i met a director that you worked with yesterday mm-hmm. and i was like oh so Sashir did that with you and he was like yes she's so funny i was like isn't she <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's just such a deep sense of pride yes. that's so sweet uh okay matthew wants to know if it was your last day on earth what would you two do before it was all over? <laughs> Let's say you guys had to spend your last day together. I mean, uh-huh. we, we would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not even hypothetical. We would find each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man, the world's ending. We should hang out. <laughs> we have to hang out. Um, um, we'd probably get food. I don't, honestly don't know if we'd do anything different. I'd just, like, look yeah. at memes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, like, get in my pool and be like, oh, last dip. Yeah. <laughs> A little stress-free dip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we... I don't know. We've had a lot of fun, so I don't think I'd be like, we have to go do one last fun yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think we would just truly really like just a, chill. That's a very nice, honest answer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we wouldn't do anything out of the norm. Yeah, we would just do things that we really know. like. Yeah. That's what mm-hmm. I would want to end out, end my life on. <laughs> and it's just mm-hmm. doing things that... I already know I really enjoy it. Yeah, and yeah, if Mateo you... is in town for the end of the world, he, he could, could cook, cook for us. <laughs> oh, that'd be best. This sounds like a plan now. <laughs> We're going to yeah. try to end the world. <laughs> what? Yeah. We'll have our perfect day. <laughs> I wanted to get into cooking because I don't really, neither one of us really cook. No. Okay. And I found an Instagram recipe and I was like, Sashir, we got to make this recipe. Uh-huh. And she was like, okay. And then we get to the supermarket and I go, okay, we got to watch the video to get the ingredients. And she was like, you didn't write down the ingredients? I was like, <laughs> Nah, dude. <laughs> so she's standing there with her phone watching this 30-second video over and over again <laughs> and, and just shouting out the ingredients at me. And then I'm writing them down. And she's like, uh, garlic. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. Hold on. <laughs> and I was like in the parking lot. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> I feel like this is a great Food Network show for you guys. Like, I can or see you, this. You just have you, you don't get to write anything down. You just have to watch this Instagram video. <laughs> and then at one point in the supermarket, I went, Sashir, parsley's green. <laughs> it was, we had already established before that point, we don't need the parsley. Yeah. Like, we were looking for the parsley. We were like, we can't find the parsley. You know what? We don't need the parsley. And then we get to. Can the- I ask what you were making? <laughs> it was, um, 
It was some, some sort, sort of, of noodles. Yeah, okay, pasta. okay. So you say, we don't need a parsley. We don't need the parsley. <laughs> and then we, she passes the parsley and she's... <laughs> <laughs> so share parsley is great as if I was like <laughs> now what does parsley look like like how are we supposed to find it I don't even know what color it is and then she answered the question I never asked <laughs> yeah. and, then, and I was like cool <laughs> uh, leave it <laughs> how did the actual meal turn out it, it was, was good. pretty good yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> it's good. I was like pretty pleased with it and I was telling this to Mateo and he was like Oh, you probably could have just gone to the link in the bio and it would have had all the recipes there. And I was like, don't tell Sashir. <laughs> and then he did tell me and I was so mad. <laughs> but it's good. You gave that Instagram video so many more views. <laughs> really boosted You're like, there. wow, this one video did well. <laughs> yeah, people like the pasta parsley <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, okay, last question. Um, Starfan wants to know, how do you guys get used to such constant traveling? She said, Nicole, I know you were just in Buffalo and I missed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was in Buffalo. I mean... Well, it must be nice. You guys travel. We talked a little bit about this, that you guys travel so much. It must be nice to look forward to having the podcast to come back and mm-hmm. like spend time with each other. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we do talk so much when we're on the road. Yeah, we still call each other <laughs> yeah. a lot. Yeah. And- we never lose contact. No, <laughs> we just no. aren't in front of each other. Have you guys de- developed any sort of like shorthand in terms of like like Mamrie and Hannah and I tried at one point to figure out like an emoji that we could all decide on that if we sent it to each other, it, like if the group chat was going really long, one of us sends this, and so the other two know I'm not ignoring this. I'm just busy oh. right now, and I shorthandedly oh. can't. And we never That's decided fire. on one. So no. it's still up in the air. When she doesn't answer, I text in all caps, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yes. And, and then, then if she doesn't call. Call. She so <laughs> call. So you guys are like helicopter parents of each other. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think that's really sweet. Or or if we're texting each other and then I'm like, ah, we should just be talking. And I call her and she has a pickup. I'm like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're on your phone. <laughs> and she's like, I'm busy. And I'm like, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of like casual aggression. Yeah, I was going to say, I like how uh, eager you guys are to get mad at the other one for intentionally ignoring you. Like, I, for whatever reason, I was like, I'm not going to see you until April. She was like, what are you talking about? That's so wild. And I was like, April 3rd? She was like, what are you talking about? I, I think you guys, and I love this, live both on the the like f- thin ice that your friendship's going to end at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you are thinking <laughs> the other's going to leave you forever. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I do feel like I spent a lot of time reassuring you that I'm your friend and I really like you. <laughs> but what, what do you wake up and you don't like me? What do I do? Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, this has been very sweet. Thank you guys so much yes. for being here. Um, before we wrap up everything completely, I want to give you guys, every guest that makes time gets a personalized fortune cookie from oh. us to you guys. Do you um, open it now? Yes, you can open it now and read the fortune that's inside. Everything's been sanitized. Oh, boy. Oh, like a wishbone. Oh, there we go. We got it. <laughs> 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 we actually went back and asked Oprah and Gail to see if they were really sure about not wanting to be on your podcast. And guess what? Uh, they didn't answer this time. <laughs> That's not a no, at least. Okay. That's uh, progress. Close, getting closer, closer, to, yeah. closer to a <laughs> leave us alone. Here's a restraining <laughs> order. It's like, we can't talk to you. We can't say yes or no because mm-hmm. we have sent papers mm-hmm. out. Yeah, we're legally not we're allowed to read papers. So, so. Uh, where can people find everything that you guys are up to? Because you're up to a million things if they don't know. Yes. Um, on social media, Instagram and Twitter, I'm at Nicole Byer. Um, I, we have our podcast, Best Friends. I have another one called Why Won't You Date Me? Another one called Newcomers, <laughs> where I watch Star Wars with Lauren Lapkus. Another one called Drag Her with Mono Agapi, where we watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Another one with Marcy Chiro called 90 Day Bay. It's only on Patreon. We watch 90 Day Fiance, the greatest oh, I love that show so show much. Show on the history of television. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a special on Netflix. Um, and then nailed it on Netflix. Oh, and I wrote a book, and I have a copy. Oh, oh yes, I've heard, it's available for pre-sale now. Yes, and it's got but a have... long, beautiful title that I wrote down. Oh, it's so pretty. 
Yes. Wow. I it's love it. It's called Very Fat, Very Brave, The Fat Girl's Guide to Being Brave and Not a Dejected Melancholy Down in the Dumps Weeping Fat Girl in a Bikini. Uh, that's incredible. It's, so, it's so long. But it's one thing to see it online, the title, yeah. like in text, and then to see it on the cover of the book actually makes it very wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So this is available for pre-sale now. Yeah, and that, is that a camera? Oh. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Yes, it's available for pre-sale and the links in my bios on Instagram and awesome. uh, Twitter. And, you know, you can go to, I think, Barnes Noble or Amazon. All or the places. All the places. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank Very you. Very exciting. Is this your where can people find everything? I mostly post about my tour dates on Instagram or Twitter. And both of those are at the sheer truth. Okay. T-H-E sheer truth. Truth and <laughs> the is the only thing you needed to spell. T H E sheer truth. <laughs> you thought people were gonna be like the like T H E E so sheer the well, <laughs> the truth. When you're listening to the word the, some people might think I'm saying the or oh, the or fair, the. Very fair. You know? All right, yeah. okay. So, and, and I'm like, they must have spelled sheer. <laughs> And truth is obvious. <laughs> I hope somebody is like, I'm going to follow her. T H E. Oh, no. C H. C H. T H E S H E E R T R U T H. There you go. <laughs> Thank there you. you go. Um, my website is thesheer.com. Uh, you can watch my last special, Pizza Mind, on Amazon and other things, I'm sure. And uh, also the album is on Spotify and iTunes and The Weeknd is on Amazon and iTunes. And um, I think that's I think that's good. Awesome. <laughs> so is, I mean, no, anyone listening can never complain of boredom because you guys have endless hours of content available so for people to absorb. Much content. Well, yeah. that's wonderful. Again, thank you guys for making time and being here. So fun. Go listen to their podcast. Go check out every piece of media that they have <laughs> out there available for you. And we'll see you guys next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Bye bye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too deep. Not too deep. Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. <laughs> <laughs>